from a place we're not allowed to reveal. It's the, 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 the Tom Likas Show. Wow. Well, look at that. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It's Thursday and time for another edition of Like Is 101. Can you attend my class? It is for your own good. I mean, a girl decides how far she's going to let you go in the first five minutes. You in my class? I am today. How's my protege? Jeremy. Yeah. He... J-Bone. J-Bone is, believe it or not, he's getting married. What? <laughs> what an idiot. Oh, what a loser. Good, good. More for me and you. I gotta go. Hey, babe. Yeah. You do whatever you have to do. Where'd you get that girl? I got her yesterday. I rode my bike over to a cemetery nearby. Her boyfriend just died. You met her at a funeral? Yeah. Dude died in a hang gliding accident. What an idiot. <laughs> Oh, I'm hang gliding, honey. Take a good picture. I'm dead. What a freak. Men are at a funeral. Funerals are insane. The chicks are so horny, it's not even fair. It's like fishing with dynamite. Horny. Yeah. Crazy horny. At a funeral. Grief is nature's most powerful aphrodisiac. <laughs> Look it up. It's like it's 101, the ongoing on-air adult education course. It teaches men how to get more tail for less money. Just as importantly, we teach women how men think. I am your professor. This is my classroom. Class is in session. This is where we teach the tenets of Lycus 101. Here we are now, a new semester. Everybody back to school. And it's time to hunker down and study hard. There's going to be one tough semester. A tough semester. Uh, it has been apparent that many of you boys have, uh, especially over the summer, have forgotten what you've learned, ignored what you learned, or quite frankly, should not have advanced to the next semester. I'm just amazed at the number of you who have fallen down the job, you have no game, you aren't getting laid, you are uh, giving up on yourself by having sex with single mothers, having sex with fat chicks. You know, spending your time with chicks who are, you know, five, six years older than you. Instead of getting what you deserve. Hot, young chicks who put out and don't give you any lip. No two ways about it. My job here as your professor is try to keep you in line. As we begin the new fall semester of Lycus 101, let me uh, let me remind you of some of the basics here. Uh, first of all, uh, those of you who've just matriculated, uh, this is a classroom, and uh, if you are you're here to uh, learn about how to keep your marriage together, how to keep your marriage spicy and exciting, how to fix your broken relationship, this is the wrong classroom for that. That is not what we teach. Get with the program. The purpose of this course, and again, man, if uh, this is not what you signed up for, I recommend you go to the Bursar's office and transfer out of this class immediately. Don't waste your time here. Because the purpose of this class is to help you sharpen your game. The purpose of this class is to help you get laid. To help you get laid with a minimum of time, energy, and money wasted on bitches who don't give you what you paid for. And that is sex. If you don't want to get laid, if getting laid is not your primary motivation in dating, this is not the class for you. If you're the kind of guy who falls in love easily or wants to have a baby and a baby mama, this is not the class for you. 
Okay, if getting married and staying with your high school sweetheart forever and ever is your goal, there's no reason to be here. Okay? If your desire is to be uh, Sir Lancelot or Sir Walter Raleigh and to be the ultimate in chivalry, opening car doors, sending flowers, cards, teddy bears, goofy little gifts, champagne, roses, candy, this is not your class. Your job is to get laid. That's it. And you must do whatever it takes to get the job done. But here are the things you won't do. You will not go out with anyone more than three dates. We believe in the three strikes you're outlaw here. If you've been on more than three dates with somebody, that's too many. Dump that bitch. If she doesn't put out within three dates, she's letting you know there's no chemistry between you. And having 13 dates or 23 dates or 33 dates is not going to make it any better. Eventually you just get mercy sex. Like one guy who called in, here you're going to get mercy sex. You don't want that. If she's not hot for you, forget it. Stop wasting your time. Stop wasting your energy. Stop wasting your money. Like us 101 students don't spend more than $40 on a date. Zero is optimum. You understand. She decides before you see her whether or not she's having sex with you. Another lobster tail or a visit from a limousine is not going to change her mind. There's no point spending money when uh, she's going to have sex with you or not based on whether there's chemistry between you. That's the reality. And a lot of guys uh, find that hard to accept. It's a blow to the ego if there's no chemistry. But the fact that there's no chemistry is not necessarily a reflection on you or the way you look or the way you are. Because one person's trash is another person's treasure. And just because somebody doesn't find you interesting, attractive, or doesn't think you're the kind of person who can give them an orgasm, it doesn't mean somebody else won't feel that way. So rather than taking it as a blow to the ego, save yourself the time and get out. Get out. By the way, the more chicks you solicit, the more likely it is you're going to find chicks with whom you have chemistry. Another rule that we must re-emphasize over and over, and I, I really have never stated this specifically as a rule, but I've got to state it here. Never be dating one chick. Never. Your job is to have a stable, a harem, a bullpen of chicks who are available when you need them to give you what you want. You know, when a chick tells you, not tonight I have a headache, or not tonight I have to wash my hair, or not tonight I have to study, you should be able to say, well, that's fine, that's okay, hang up the phone, and then you call the next chick on the list. You call someone in from the bullpen. You say, I need someone to pitch the fifth inning, let's go. And you bring her in. And you always have somebody else to bring in. This is why being unmarried is so much better than being married. Because once you're married, when she says she's got a headache, you have no options. She has a monopoly on the vagina. And you can't get it anywhere else. That's why you must treasure the years you were unmarried. And you must use them to the fullest extent. Stop with the girlfriend. Stop with the commitment. Stop with trying to impress everybody with how mature you think you are. Remember, when you're young, you have the biggest pool of hot, available, young, nubile chicks that you will ever have in your entire life. You must remember to use that to the max. If you don't have a pitching staff like a Major League ball team with nine or ten pitchers, you're not doing the job. You need you need a stopper, you need a closer, you need a middle relief person, you need a mop-up girl. You need somebody to fulfill all the different roles. Now, what are the roles when you're dating? You need somebody who cleans up well in case you need to bring a chick to a, a company function. Maybe it's the Christmas party or, you know, the 4th of July barbecue. You need the chick that is just so hot and slutty and disgusting that you can't introduce her to anybody else. Maybe uh, to relieve uh, some of the pressure when the other girls aren't available, maybe you need the slightly chunky chick. You go over to her place. Nobody knows about her. You go over there. She's always available because no guy really wants to be her boyfriend. She will get the job done thinking you might want to be the boyfriend. You never, ever say anything to give her the idea there's any kind of commitment. You want the hot chick that you know you can never marry because you don't make enough money for her. But guess what? 
She's happy to have sex with you. She'll just never marry you. Don't take that as an insult. Take it as an advantage. Guess what? You get to test drive the Maserati because some other, before some other sucker buys it. Grab those opportunities. Take them. Run with them. Never, never, never say, well, you know, I don't see a future here, so therefore I don't want to have sex with her. Are you kidding me? I know you guys say it. You guys have called in and said that. Stop it. Your job here is to get laid by every flavor, every color, every height. Well, not every weight, but you know what I'm talking about. With as little commitment as possible. And at her place as often as possible so she doesn't know where you live, so she can't stalk you, so she can't come to your place on nights when you've got other chicks at your place. You don't want that happening. Obviously, some of these chicks live at home with mommy and daddy, and some of these chicks live with roommates, and sometimes it's impossible to go to their place. But I must tell you, if it is possible, if they live alone, if they've got their own place, you must go over there and do the dirty deed at their place. Stop with this idea that you have to keep bringing chicks to your house. You don't. And any time you can avoid that, it must be resolutely resisted. Other things to be resolutely resisted as a Lycus 101 student, no having babies, no sex without condoms, no releasing your DNA into the atmosphere. You do not let chicks have your sperm for any reason. Because when they get their hands on it, it's like you've given them the keys to the vault. You've given them a blank check with your name printed at the top. Sperm is money. And women can turn it into money just by implanting it in themselves and having a baby. Never have sex without a condom. Never believe a broad who tells you she can't get pregnant, or she just got her tubes tied, or the doctor said it's impossible, or whatever. Don't believe it. Keep in mind that even when chicks are on the pill, most of them are too stupid or uneducated to know that, for example, if you take antibiotics while you're on the pill, it negates the pill. The pill is not effective. Chicks don't even know how the pill works. Do you know I dated a chick one time who told me she was on the pill? Oh, she was on the pill all right. Instead of taking one on Sunday and one on Monday and one on Tuesday, she took the pill when she had sex. And only when she had sex. If she had sex four times in a day, she took a pill four times. If she didn't have sex for a week, she didn't take a pill at all. Yeah, she was on the pill. That was one of my four abortions, by the way. Oh, yeah. Too stupid to know. Didn't ask the doctor. Didn't do any reading. Didn't do any research. Didn't even read the instruction booklet that came with the pills. Never believe a chick when she says she's on birth control. Never believe a chick when she says the doctor says she can't have kids. Never believe a chick who says she's allergic to latex. Ever gotten that one? We've all gotten that one at one time or another. Oh, no, I'm allergic to latex. I'm not on birth control because I don't want to get fat, and I'm allergic to latex. It's irritating. It irritates me, and I'm allergic. The doctor said I can't have latex. These are women who want to have babies. Do you want to have a baby? Is that what you want? Do you want to give up your education? Do you want to give up your wealth? The possibility of earning wealth? The possibility of having a great career? The possibility of having complete freedom to be anything you want? To have any profession in the world? To travel the world? you want to give that up? So some broad who's hot today will have sex with you and uh, have an orgasm with you and you have an orgasm with her and, 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 and she has a baby. And therefore, all your hopes and dreams go down the drain because you have to pay for that baby. Is that what you want? Think hard. As much as you want to get laid, is that the life you want? You must protect your future. And you must do it with condoms. And don't believe chicks when they say they can't get pregnant. Always use a condom even when they say that. Please. Now, these are the basics. There's much more to like us 101, including the fact that we don't date single mothers. We just don't. Okay, We avoid those like the plague. If you've got questions about the rules and regulations, if you've got questions on how to sharpen your game on how to get laid, and if you're not one of those people who's married and trying to spice up your marriage, if you're not one of the people who wants to uh, fix a broken relationship, then you call me right now at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. 
And if you're a woman who wants to know how men think, your professor is here to help. Many of our female students get very angry at what is taught in this classroom, the tenets of Like Us 101. Uh, your professor is here to smooth out those rough edges and to explain, look, girls, nothing personal. This is just the way guys think. And those who don't think this way find out the hard way that they ought to be thinking this way. Ladies, you can call us as well at 1-800-5800-TOM. All right, class has begun for the new fall semester of Like Mike is 101. Your calls are coming up next. 1 800 5800 Tops. 1 800 5800 866. Like it. If a man really wants to have relationships with women, he can have relationships with one woman after another. And the minute she starts going, Honey, it's been two years. Is it the time you gave me a ring? Bam! You cut her off and you have a relationship with the next woman. It's Like It's 101 on the Tom Like It Show. Like us 101. I am your professor. 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. All right, let's start the new fall semester with Miguel on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Miguel. Oh, oh, hello, Tom. Yes. Thanks for taking my call. I am a father I have sinned. I'm in desperate need of your advice. Okay. I, um,. Up to the la- up until this or well, this last this summer, I've been you know going with the whole like this one on one thing, and I, I I love the lifestyle that that I've provided for myself while sticking to the rules, and I've been I've been listening to you for a couple of years now, and turning a lot of my unhappy friends onto you, and uh, it's worked out pretty cool. But um, I was messing around with this girl for a little while, and she. Um, you know, it got old, and we just decided that it, we were we weren't for each other, kind of thing. Like as far as what we we were on the same page as far as everything, and so we stopped we stopped messing around. Well, two months later, she I continued, you know, with my with my life, and uh, two months later, she calls me up and tells me that she's two months uh, late on her on her um, birth control. Or no, on on her period, and that she thinks that she might be pregnant. She didn't want to scare me, but she wanted to let me know. And, of course, I started panicking because I made the mistake, the biggest mistake that I've ever done, and I'm totally paying for it with everything. And that's the, and I, I didn't use a condom once when we when Why we not? I just, it was just, I messed up. I mean, I can't say it was because I was drunk, but it really was. I was hammered. And but was but haven't I been telling you you need to use a condom 100% of the time? Yes. That, so why all. didn't you do it? I, I just messed up. I just, I can't. No, no, you, but you, you messed, messed up means you didn't use a condom one time. You didn't just mess up. You made a conscious decision to go against what I taught you. Yeah, and I, I and I was I was using condoms with her through like throughout, and it was just like the one time uh, we ended up going out to the beach and uh, going like it just it just like I was just dumb, and I I mean there's not there's nothing really like I beat myself up about it so much, and I've known because I know better, and I just. I just don't really know what to do now because she we had agreed that we were. And then what have I told you to do when a chick gets pregnant? Get an abortion. Right. And didn't I tell you when she gets the abortion, you go with her? Yes. See, the thing is that um, we we'd agreed that that would be best for us if she got an abortion. So she. She was, I thought, okay, we'll sp- schedule it out, and I'm going to take you and all that stuff. And we agreed, and it was good, you know. And and there I go and mess, and I messed up again. I gave her the money for it. Why did you do that? that Why did you do that? Why did you do that? I just, I just thought that maybe that would just show her that I'm, that I was serious about going through the abortion, or that I wasn't. But you're, to. you know how you know you're serious? You're going with her, and you're paying for it. That's how you know she's serious about getting it. Yeah. I just, if she tells you she doesn't want you coming along, I smell a rat. Oh yeah, definitely. Did she tell you she didn't want you coming? No, not at all. And she was all for it. She so why didn't it. you go? Well, no. The thing is that she then she didn't schedule it. Instead, she well she went to this place that ended up being like 
She didn't want to go to Planned Parenthood because she says that's where the crackheads went. And I figured, okay, well, I don't want to make her uncomfortable because she's already doing what we've agreed. So I said, okay, well, choose a place that's going to be better and then go. And she ended up going to some place that was all religious, and they put all these ideas in her head and made her think more than about it. And, so, uh, oh, it well, and you see, if them. you were there with her, that wouldn't have happened, would it? No, that's totally right. Why but, didn't you go? I hadn't even thought. Uh, you know, I hadn't even thought about this. Whole uh, haven't I told you that you need to go with them when they have the abortion? And see, the thing is that she have that, I told you that? Did you hear me say that? Yes, you have told me. Did I, you hear me say that? Yes. I, Why didn't you do what I said? I just trusted that she that she was going to. Why do would you trust? Want. Why would you trust? What is the trusting? Why would you trust her? Uh, I'm dumb. That's really all I can say. Didn't I tell you not to trust women in this case? Never trust them when it comes to pregnancy. Never trust them when they say, I, my doctor says I can't get pregnant. Or, I'm allergic to latex. Or, don't worry, I just want to feel you. Uh, haven't I told you, don't believe a word they say? Yes, you told me over and over. And, and you I thought you knew more than I did. Never, never, but but I apparently by my actions it seems like that. But I never thought I, I just know. If you I, if you didn't think you knew more than I did, you'd do what I say. That is true. I just you yeah, thought just you that. knew better. You thought you had it all under control, Mister Cool. You had it all taken care of. I totally did. Oh, you're so right. But you had nothing under control. You know, you could have taken control. All you had to do was pick an abortion clinic that wasn't Planned Parenthood yourself. And then tell her we have an appointment. We're going this Thursday at 9 a.m. We're going. I tried to do that, and um, she. But by then she had already because I found a place online, and. Uh, and I figured, okay, well, if, if maybe she doesn't want to go to Planned Parenthood because she doesn't want to, because, you know, it's, it's a small town and uh, maybe she doesn't want everybody to know that, you know. About you could have taken her to another town. So I, so I looked for a place out of, out of the town and um, she said, oh, well, don't worry about it. I, I haven't found a place and I have an appointment here. And said, I said, all right, right on. And then um, just me, like, yeah, I just. I just, I messed up and I trusted it. You let she, this she, thing she, spin out of control, and now you're going to pay for it. Yes, that's, that's the whole Because thing, now right? the born-again nutcases, the uh, the Sarah Palin fans, all uh, uh, they all uh, got a hold of your girl there, and they uh, they made her feel guilty for doing something that's absolutely normal and legal. Yeah, but let me tell you the worst part about this, Tom, is that I then... then um, I found out that she, you know, she's been pushed party. Not that I care what she does with her life anymore, but now it's affecting me because she's been partying and like sniffing coke, and like I just, I just can't handle the thought because now she's now it's like okay, then if you're trying, if you're not trying to go through with it, then then get an abortion and follow our agreement. And if, but she's not doing that, and at the same time she's just because I'm like kind of. I, try, I kind of distanced myself from her, like she was just being, she was using that as an excuse to be all messed up and you know just go just go get faded on. I mean, isn't she aware of what sniffing coke will do while you're pregnant? No, she knows. She knows, and that's and she. And then I talked to her, and after like being angry and everything, I came. I was like, okay, I got to take control of this. So I started. So I started being, uh, like, being there, like hanging out with her, like as friends. I let her know that I care about her as a tight friend, not as a lover, and um, that. And so she, so like she was like, oh yes, I'm gonna, uh, you know, I'm gonna try to. I'm gonna try my best to be better, you know, for myself, and not not just because it's bad for the baby, but it's bad for myself. But the whole time I've let her know that. that so I she's already talking it. about the baby. No, I've never said. See, but I don't see how she can say that when she's over here being so self-destructive that it just really, really makes. Because me... somebody convinced her that having an abortion was bad, bad, bad. So instead of having an abortion, 
Uh, she'll do it uh, the the slow way. It's like the people who don't have the guts to commit suicide. So they eat themselves to death or they drink themselves to death. It's the same thing. Here's somebody who's been told abortion is wrong, so she'll have an abortion another way. You're so right, Tom. I just thought of I came to that conclusion today because that's what I thought that was going on, that she was hoping she'd miscarriage so she wouldn't feel, be on her conscience. But... It's not happening. She's still doing everything. And it's like, I just don't really know what to do because, uh, like, I, I, I tried to just be, I tried so hard to just be cool with her. And, like, I even took her to a concert this weekend just to be, like, show her a good time. And, you know, this is what, this is life is with, you know, with the way we are and it's fun and everything's going to change. And, but she just, I don't know. I, I even offered, I said, hey, if you go through, if you go through, with our agreement, I'd like to go do something fun. Let's get it. I have a good idea. Let's go. Let's go somewhere to Hawaii or something, and it'll just be. It'll be fun, you know. It'll be. And this, I'm just telling her stuff to let her know that that would be bad for the baby. Yeah, that I don't. I don't. But but she had. But my. I have. I've never ever said that. Oh yes, let's go through with it. Let's take care of it. I've been okay. I don't want to force her to do anything she doesn't want to do. But this is why not. I feel. This is how I feel. Well, that's if, how you I, can, if you can if you can guilt trip her into doing what she doesn't want to do, that's perfect. See, and I, I and I, I tried that too, and then she and then she tried to reverse that on me, like like I was so horrible and how this and that. And there we go. It's just a whole mind game, and I just don't. She's I just, having you your know. baby. What a lovely way of saying how much money she's taken from you. Oh my God! I know it's so bad. I just uh, I I've, I've been through every single stage of this, like the whole depression to anger, everything. Now I just mm. I just don't I, I don't really know what what I'm up to next. I mean, I, I know. Really you know uh, say, okay, you know what we say on this program. It's like the old sign of the gas station: we don't fix bad brake jobs. I know. You, you, I gave you all the information you needed, buddy. You violated everything that you remembered. You had sex without a condom. You, uh, uh, you gave her the money for the abortion instead of going there with her. You didn't provide her with a good alternative, like, bam, right out of your mouth. Here, this is where we're going to go. This is what we're going to do. It has to be like a hit-and-run accident. You have to get that done as quickly as possible before she has a chance to discuss it with people. But you didn't. You let it drag on and on. You gave her the money. You gave her all the time in the world, and this is what you get. She's still confused whether she wants to do it or not. Well, know there's going to come a time when it's going to be too late. She's not going to be able to get an abortion. I, I know it's, it's still not too late. Um... So that that's why I just I haven't given up as far as um like wanting 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 an abortion. Well, you haven't it's given up wanting it, but you didn't do anything to prevent her getting pregnant. That's true. That is so true. I mean, I can't. I I have nothing to say against that, dude. I mean, I have no excuses for my behavior. I really don't. I've I just know that I don't know that it, whatever I can do now to try to help myself. Um, it was going to decide get a second get a second job cuz you're going to need it yeah and when i want that 1995 oil change i want you to check my wiper fluid as well yeah definitely so Pal, that that is exactly where you're heading so there's there's yeah there's nothing that I'm that I haven't really thought about. Maybe that I might be able to do. You, that you might recommend. Yeah, yeah. Well, use a condom. You could have done that. Yes, that, that's good. And don't me, give her I, money. I, don't I, give her money for an abortion. You could have done that. Yeah. Pick a place and make sure she gets there. You could have done that. So you 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 ignore every warning I've given you, every rule I've given you, and now that you know, now that you have driven past every road close sign with your car, you just broke down the barriers, kept driving, kept driving. Now that you're at the end of the road and you're looking down a cliff, now you want to know what you should do. 
That's kind of how it appears to be. Hold on. And that is how it appears to be, baby. That's how it is. Tom, Tom like it. it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Now, how would you say dump that bitch in Chinese? What would that mean, literally? It would be like, uh, take that slut and throw her in the trash. <laughs> <laughs> throw, throw her out. It's the Tom Likes Show. Likas 101, I'm Tom Likas, your professor. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Are you on the Tom Likas show, Helen? Are you in? Are you there? Hi, Tom. How are you after that last conversation? Ah, uh, well, I'm doing fine. I'm sure he's not. Oh, I know he's not. He's an idiot, Tom. And I'm glad you gave it to him that way because... I wish there was a pill for common sense, because he needs to take some of it. He really does. On a daily basis. <laughs> I believe that he would absolutely trust her after her getting pregnant. He I know. is an idiot. He is. <laughs> a real idiot, Tom. I'm glad you gave it to him like that, because... There are a lot of men out there that are gullible, and they believe what a woman says, and I'm glad that you have a show that actually educates men on what they need to do, because they obviously don't know. And even after he listens to you, he still messes up. I know. What's the deal there? Then he I wants me to fix it. After he ignores everything I've told him, now he wants me to fix it. Tom, it doesn't matter what you say. He's still going to do what he wants to do. And I just, I really cannot believe that story. I was appalled. I'm sitting here. I can't believe it. Obviously, he doesn't have all of his marbles in a basket because even after she got pregnant the first time, he still trusts her enough to take his money and go to a clinic by herself. Yeah, uh, yeah, he gave her money to go to the clinic. Yeah, go by yourself. Go take care of that. Let me know how it works out. Jesus. 1-800-5800-TOM. John, I like us 101. Hello. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing great. First time, long time. Yeah. Um, I have a situation. I've been uh, dating this girl for a year and a half. Why? And, uh, why? <laughs> I don't know why. I'm stupid. What do you mean you don't know Why? <laughs> You're in love! <laughs> um, you love her! Yeah, well, I was dumb enough to let her move in with me, too. <laughs> Strike two! <laughs> well, here's the situation. Uh, I basically caught her talking to her ex F buddy, and I really don't know what to do with the situation. She keeps what do you mean you don't know what to do? But. She keeps begging me and crying not to leave, and I don't know. It's just I kind of feel for her. Oh, Jesus. She's at your place. You're not leaving. No, I'm not going to leave. Of course not. She's begging you not to leave? How can you leave? She's the one who's leaving. She's begging me not to kick her out, I guess. Begging you not to kick her out. Well, that, that's just not acceptable. Period. End of story. Yeah, I don't. I didn't think so either. Zero tolerance policy. All right. Now she can talk to her ex all she wants from her own apartment. Exactly. Yeah, I, I don't even know. I, I kind of feel for her too because she's never actually like been out on her own. This is her first time. Well, that's coming soon, and she's going to learn fast. You can tell her the benefits too. You now you can talk to him anytime you like. No more hiding. All the talking you want to do, honey, you can do it. Right. Okay. I noticed the ex isn't paying her rent. No, he's not. <laughs> I am. I'm paying her car payment, too. Why are you doing that? <laughs> Seriously, I, I, want to, I want to know why you're doing that. Uh, she's, when I first met her, she was driving a pretty crappy car, so. That's not your problem. She's driving a crappy car because she's a lazy bitch. 
that's the thing, you know. It's, it's the other thing too is she, she's always worked since I've ever known, ever since I've known her, and uh, I really haven't seen her ever put anything into all the bills or anything. It's just I don't know what she does with her money. I have no idea. I pay for everything. Ah, and you allowed it to happen. Yeah, this is the second time too. I was married before. <laughs> so, so you've done this before. Yeah. And why did you need to have another relationship after you were married to uh, a slug? You know, I think it's just I was in a. I, I've always been in a relationship, and it's it's. Uh, I'm, I guess I'm not used to being alone. Yeah. Well. And you feel sorry for your girlfriend because she's not used to being alone. You see, this is what my, my therapist has told me so many times that it's true. You know, we tend to hook up with people who are like us. Right. Right. You're, uh, you're completely right. Then you feel sorry for her, not because of her. You feel sorry for her because you would be afraid to be alone. Yeah, and it really sucks. I mean, I'm, I'm looking around and there's all these women everywhere and they're all trying to talk to me. I mean, I feel tied down. Yeah, and I'm sure you'll move in with the next one three weeks after this one moves out. Yeah, I really don't think I want to Because do that. you're lonely! <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't think I'll make that mistake a third time. You know, why are you making her car payments? Stop that tomorrow! You're right, I need... Mean, Whose name is that car uh, registered in? It's in her name. Are you kidding me? Yeah, it's in her name. So essentially you're paying for sex. Yeah, that's what it sounds like, huh? Well, you could have hired a professional who'd do a better job. Yeah, it probably would have been cheaper, too. Probably would have looked better, too. <laughs> well, that's the thing. She's really, really pretty. And uh, she really has a good personality, and everybody. Well, then, then, then she should go and become what she is—a whore. Yeah, because that's what I really feel like she is right now. Well, if you think she's a whore, then why would you waste one more second living with her? You're right. You know what? I'm going to dump her. You're right. I'm going to let her go. Thank you. You have Tom. to do it. Yeah, I'm going to. Thank you. Appreciate it, Tom. Give us an update, John. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Good. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Brandy on the Tom Likas Show. Likas 101. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great. Good. It seems like you're belittling women. Not all women out there are gold diggers. No one said all women are gold diggers. No, no, no. Because you got women like me who have a full-time job, go to school full-time, yeah, I have no kids, but you know, I don't need a man to take care of me. Well, that's what the fat and fuglies generally say, and I must say that's perfectly fine. You should be working. You should be studying hard. You should be working hard because no man will pay your bills. <laughs> well, you know what? There are men who will pay my bills, but you know what? I can take care of myself. Yeah, okay? but they're all, they're all 55 years old. <laughs> all these men that are out there talking about I pay her bills and this bill, I'm a kicker to the curb. You, know, They got women who have no self But those are attractive women they're talking about. They're attractive women? Yes. You know <laughs> they're attractive because they don't work and they're not paying their own bills. You, on the other hand, you're working, you're paying bills, you say you don't need a man. How tall are you, darling? I'm 5'7". How much do you weigh? My gosh, look at you. I weigh 130. 130. Mm, it's Size in the 38 double D breasts that are real, too. 38 double D, not 34 double D? Ooh, I think you weigh more than you say. <laughs> you know what? Okay. Darling, I, you know, I've been feeling up breasts for years, not only personally, but professionally, because I've been signing racks forever. And 38 double D is not 34 or 32 double D. It's, there's some chunka chunka there. Look at you. Well, you know what? Size does not all matter. Size doesn't matter. There are some big women out there that are beautiful women. So okay? and so and you're and you're you're big, right? We're gonna have sex with some skinny. You are not what you are not one thirty, are you? No, I am. No, you're not. Yeah, no, seriously. I just for some reason I have always had big. Breasts. Come down to the studio, darling. Unless your breast weighs sixty pounds, you come down to the studio and we're gonna have you a weigh in. 
You don't win anything. The zero tolerance policy, darling, you're gone. You're out! The T word. George Carlin said he doesn't understand why that word's on the list, but it is. 1-800-5-800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Luis on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, uh, Tom. Yes. Hey, Louis. Uh, I just want to see if you give me some advice. Yes. Because uh, uh, I just got home from work and I seen my girlfriend's cell phone. And Why do you have a girl? Wait, you're how old? 23, it says here? Um, you're 23? Are you 23 years old? Sir. Is that a yes or a no? Hello? Yeah, that, yes, you're 23, aren't you? Sir, yes I am, 23. Okay, and you have a girlfriend? And she's 23 also. And uh, well, well, that's a mistake right there, but go ahead. Uh, you came home, and she lives with you. That's strike two, and what did you find? Oh, I came home from work, and she's been acting strange lately this past two weeks. And I opened her cell phone, and I guess I found somebody else number, but I'm not sure... If I don't know what's going on, or I don't really know what's going on. Well, you do know what's going on. You're too much of a coward to confront it. Well, it's bad, but uh, I'm just, oh, I'm not sure just what to do. Kick her ass out is what you do, and stop having girlfriends. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I tend to believe you are too much of a pussy to do the right thing. Our email address, Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. The Tom Likas Show.